Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Jewel. I'm going to do a little short series on transforming uh, these books that came in this box. These are um, ant uh, vintage books from an old Webster's Deluxe Desk Reference Library. And so last uh, time, or last video, I was um, telling you what I had, was, had coming up, and this was one of the projects that I wanted to do. Now, these books started out uh, like this brown color, and I've got one here that I've painted black, and I'll tell you the process to get from the brown to here, and we're going to actually do one of these today. So I'm going to be making the whole set into, with the, with the, um, spine intact, uh, a little um, writing uh, writing set for writing. So um, each one of these I did different, and you can see it's an antique look, and I'm doing them all in a Paris theme. The insides will be in a Paris theme. You can see I got gold, gold paint on my finger. Um, and I really like the way the covers are turning out. I have not coated the top coat on them yet to um, the sealer coat, which I will do. So it took several processes to get them to look like this. So I wanted you to see the spine. Okay, so here's the spine of this one. You can see this ornate, um, this ornate spine here, and then I did some uh, elements here, and then uh, did this here, and then you can see this floral or like a um, oh filigree element uh, here, and then these were just simply die cuts. Well, this is a embossing folder or an emboss, dry embossed from a, a folder, and then this is a, a die cut, and this was a die cut, and these are just cut pieces, and I'm gonna show you how I do this and how I get these gold stripes, these little gold bits and everything. So there's the back, so that's that one. This one um, looks like this. Okay, this is a die cut here, and then this is chipboard here that I've um, treated, and then some of these gold pieces here, which, I'm going to show you how to do that. And then here is the spine here. Now, um, th this part right here, I want you to see these sheets of gold. These, I, I got this idea from Climie's, um Creations. And I will link her below where she uh, figured out how to get like the gold leafing strips. And then when you cut them down, you get these beautiful gold um, pieces like this. And it's simply by using uh, paint, uh, acrylic paint, and she chose the pure gold. And I thought it was beautiful because I have other golds that aren't as vivid as this. So uh, this is like three or to four coats of the gold paint I simply did on this manila colored cardstock to get that in them. Let me, while I'm here, I'm just going to tell you real quick, the best way to achieve this nice, like a, a, a real sleek or just where it just looks seamless, is to, when you apply your gold, keep going in the same, like this, in the same, um, the brush stroke the same way. Okay, and so you're going to have to go over this several times, and then you get, you know, two to three coats, well, three to four, actually, and you'll get a piece that looks like that. <clears throat> so that's how I got these. So I give the credit to her for this, and I thought that was spectacular um, because I love to add gold into my journals. Then I have this one. As you can see, it's a die cut that uh, it was a bigger die no, this is an, an embossing folder, a bigger folder, and then I cut out the word Paris here, and then I, I did that with the different color paints and then the gold dry brushing, and we're going to do that. And then two of the pieces of that um, acrylic paint strip there, and then I did this uh, piece here on the spine, and this is from an embossing uh, 
folder. Now, I wanted to show you, I have a lot of these, um, and I use them on the edge of my pages and in different places in my books and stuff like that. So I basically went in and found the ones that I thought would look best on the spine. So I used this one, and then I had one that looked like this, you know, when it, you know before you paint it and then this one right here is this one and here's the front of this one and this here is a die cut again so they all look a little bit different because i didn't want every one because i'm going to be selling this set on on um etsy I didn't want them all to look the same. Now, the one I'm I'm going to do today in this this little book I'm going to give away because I can't fit, even though it came with a set of five, because I'm building these up a little bit, I'm not going to be able to get five in here. We will, um, on the second part, well, part two, this will probably be a three-part video because I'm I'll just show, I'm not going to show you, I'm going to show you how to reinforce the spines and all that and how to gut the book here in a minute. And then to achieve this antique gold, uh, blackish blue color. And then, um, we will, uh, do the box together as well. Um, I think I'm going to simply be ripping this paper off and then we're going to recover it. And I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to recover it in yet. So um, let's get going. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to show you how I achieved that. I came in and I did not gut this book yet and we're going to do it together in a moment. I am using, well, what I did use is I used ivory black and unbleached titanium in these other books, but I ran out. This is empty. So now I've pulled out a Mars black and the ivory to get a, like, a gray black or a soft black color. Let me see. I got a towel here. I just put this. I've got a little gold on my um, my mat here because we're going to be using that. So simply what I did to get the color I wanted is I used some Mars Black and this is the first coat because we're going to do a different treatment here in a minute. And then the unbleached titanium. I just put a little bit of the titanium and the Mars Black to get this. It's, I know it probably looks super black, but it really isn't. It's more like a soft, soft black. Um, now, what I want to do is I want to come in and dry brush a, a uh, more of a grayish tone. So I'm going to mix some of this Mars Black right here. I'm, I'm not even pulling out a palette. I'm just going to simply do it right here on my craft mat and some of this ivory color and um, I'm just going to mix it with make sure there's no gold left on that to get the color I want and that's still a little bit too dark for me so I'm going to come in and do this And uh, I had a piece of cardboard out here on my desk. Yeah, they're over here because I'm going to be needing chipboard, I should say, a piece of chipboard. Okay, so this looks good. It's, um, it's like a dark gray color. And I'm going to kind of get as much off of this. I don't want this much on my... I should have a paper towel over here. Let me get a paper towel. I don't want that much paint on my brush. So I'm gonna wipe a little bit off. And now I'm just coming in and I'm dry brushing down one way and then up the other. And you can see, so what it is is my, my brush is nearly dry it's got just a, a little bit of paint maybe a little bit more paint than I really want uh, so you do that till you get the effect you want 
and um, I usually try to come in on the sides where you would, um, where the book would normally age from being picked up and then down the back and then we'll do the back. Oh, I forgot to take the guts of the book out. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a minute. So I'm just gonna quickly do this. Um, because I'm using gold and I'm doing like a Paris theme, I kind of wanted to go with these color, this color scheme, but a navy would be pretty, and a blues, you know, a deep blue with the gold if you want to use the gold. You could do the same thing with silver paint for like silver leafing, you know, or uh, you could do that. Um, when I first, the first couple I did, I sanded the, the top and I really didn't like the way it was coming out. It was taking too much of the book because I wanted to get rid of this, um, uh, the imprint here where it says Webster's fingertip fact, this is the fact finder. Each one was di is different. One was the dictionary, one's the spelling dictionary, one's the, the sources and then the grammar guide. So um, let me do the spine here. But the spine will be pre pretty much covered, but the... All right, now I don't know if you can see that. That's like a, not a lot of difference, but it is some. It starts to give the weathered look, the aged, you know, appearance. And that's what we're getting for, going for, I should say, getting for, going for. All right, now um, I'm going to get a baby wipe and just wipe some of this up. I'm not going to worry too much about it. I have another craft mat in there because I just want to get moved, move on. And I'm uh, gonna get at least the majority of this paint off. I want the gold there because I'm gonna need that next. Before we go on with the gold, if you haven't done this before, I'm gonna show you quickly how um, I got a book. I find uh, where the um, the where it would the spine you know right you don't want to go all the way through so you kind of just bend this back and you're going to find where it's glued in and you just want to just take your um cutter see i didn't get all the way through so there's a little bit more Again, I don't, I want to make sure, well, I did go through. Now I'm going to have to reinforce that. That's what I didn't want to have happen. But that's okay because we're going to be covering this and I'm going to be reinforcing the spine. That I did not want to happen. But of course, because we're filming, that's when all the, the mishaps happen, right? Which is fine. Then you guys get to see, you know things like that happen and then how you can save it. And then the whole thing should come right out. See, there's glue there, so get just this right here. And then I will, when we get to the next part, I'm gonna show you how we're going to um, reinforce that spine. So here's the book, and now all these old pages I can use, <clears throat> excuse me, here, let me get a sip. In my, um, hold on, in my journals. I bought this, um, this size because I wanted it, uh, the papers for, to be smaller than the regular size books and so I could use them in smaller, smaller journals. Now, let me <clears throat> get, <clears throat> boy, I got a frog in my throat. Sorry, guys. <clears> throat> Wow, I don't know what's going on, but 
I've been in here all day painting. I've done all those covers today. But what I was saying is uh, about the sanding, I decided I was just gonna cover up the front. <clears throat> Still got that frog. All right, I'm just cleaning my brush here because I'm gonna use the same one. And I like, this is like a stenciling brush and I like it for the dry brushing, but you can use, you know, any brush. What, you know, whatever, you know, is comfortable for you. But this works good for me for dry brushing. It's got a little black on it, but that's okay. All right, now we're going to take the gold. Oh, I should have painted the cardboard before. Oh, well. All right, now I'm just going to take, I'm going to need more gold than that. Now I want to come in and do the same thing with the gold. And now, whoops, that's too much. Now, if you get like that where it's too much, just simply before it dries, get in with a baby cloth and then wipe it, and that would be, you know, that works fine. All right, let me start over here. Now, see there again, this is the, the edges where you would see, you know, where it would be more worn just from holding it and things. And that's kind of what I'm going for with this. And I usually kind of go around the sides first, and then I'll just do a long stroke. This will be covered here in the middle, but. And you do it until you're happy with it. You know, like I might come in and take a little of that off, but I think by the time I get my middle thing on, that will be good. Now I'm just going to go up the spine a little bit because most of this will be covered with my filigreed um, embossed piece. And then also, you're going to want to do the dark color here too, you know, because you're gonna mat some papers in here, so you wanna make sure you paint on the inside as well. That's my dog crying at the door. I told I said to my husband, he's home. It's I'm I'm filming this on Saturday, and I said, make sure you keep the dogs out with, for, with you, and listen if they're crying at the door, come and get them. Well, it's just like when the kids were little, you'd say, make sure you do this. Make well, nope, nope. All right, let's see how I like that. Sometimes, and then after I let it dry, I'll come in and see if I have to add any more. So there's the basics of that, and you can see the gold and all of that. Now, um, I'm gonna leave that there because we're gonna need that. And I'm looking for which one, it, well, first of all, let me figure out which one of these I wanna do. I think I'm going to use this one right here so we will paint that. So let me cut that out first. So I just cut the strip out and then we're gonna cut around that, but I'm gonna paint that. I'm going to treat the, the elements that go on the, whoops, that's the, that's the paint that's gone. The elements that go on the cover the same way as the, um, let me get a little bit more because I got to do the 
chipboard for the front. Let me find the chipboard. Let me see, this is a good size piece. Yeah, I think that, so I'm just gonna paint this whole thing. Now I have some little pieces here that I've painted already and right here that I just need to treat with the gold yet and these are going to be cut down and used up here um, like this. Say I just built them up a little bit here. All right, let me grab, huh. I lost my big, my big brush. Well, that's bizarre. Oh, here it is, it's clean. I cleaned it. And this is what I used to paint the cover, so. All right, let's see. I might have to add a little bit more of the off-white in. Nah, I think that's fine. All right, let me paint this real quick. Oops. And then we'll treat it the same way. So this is the first coat. This is the plain black. And make sure you get down the sides. And this is a very lightweight chipboard. On my big books, I usually uh, do the, you know, the heavier weight when I'm doing a, um, a label style front. All right, I don't need to go all the way to the bottom because I'm not even gonna need this much. So let me put that aside to dry. Let me get a little bit more here. All right, and then I'm, I decided to use this one, so let's paint this one. I hope I have enough paint here, I don't think I do. Let me get a little bit more. Um, while I got you, I wanted to let you know I have a sale going in my Etsy shop. I sold a few things um, the other day, but I still have some beautiful journals up there that are for sale. Some of my larger ones are up there. Uh, and they're 20% off right now. And also free priority shipping. And this is my Memorial Day sale and it will run till the end of Memorial Day. So you might wanna check that out if you don't have one of my journals and you've wanted one, now is a good time to do it uh, because of the sale. After that, they're gonna be, it's gonna go off. So, all right, uh, what else? I wanna make sure I don't get rid of this before anything else I gotta paint in black. Well, the inside, of course, but I don't wanna do that now because um, I hate wasting that paint. That bugs me. <laughs> All right, but I'm gonna have to. Let me clean it off. Get some of this off and then um, we will move on with the next step. All right, now we're ready to figure out, okay, we're gonna build up the edges of this. So you can see like on this one. So I have some little pieces of the gold here. Here's this, here's this size. I think this is the size I want. And then I need to cut some little pieces of uh, cardboard. And but before I do that, you know what? I need to go ahead and treat this real quick. All right, 
right. Now, I want about a quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to pretty much eyeball a quarter of an inch right here. And I'll do another one. Okay, and then I'm just going to measure it by putting it on the book. And let me flatten the book like, whoops. You can see that boo-boo there. I'm thinking I almost need, let's go ahead and reinforce the spine. Uh, hold on. I've got some, you can reinforce it with anything you want. Tie back, even uh, tape. I have actually book cloth uh, or book um, tape to reinforce books. It's like this shiny kind of stuff. And I'm just going to run this right down in the center here. So let me mark this. And uh, you can, I got this off of Amazon. Right here, actually. Uh, and it works well because it's actually already got the stick -em on it. You can use fabric. I like this because it just, um, it's a real strong material. But Tyvek works. Well, if I can get it. There we go. Just have to work the adhesive away from the... There we go. There. So this is pretty simple. Just going to come in and just put this whoops right in the middle. Like this. Doesn't even have to be even because this is all going to be covered. And I will do that for each one of the. Sometimes you might even have to put a little bit of cardboard in there. But these, let me show you, I didn't make that mistake. See, they have the piece of cardboard in there still. So that worked out real well. But this will be fine. All right, now I feel better. All right, here's my pieces. So let me take this. Boy, I'm covered with paint. And I'm gonna bring it down about a quarter inch. Well, maybe a little bit more. Let me flip it over so I can see my pencil mark. Now when you, this has a somewhat of a little bit of a rounded spine, so when I, I'm going to kind of mold this a little bit, so it's just going to take it and bend it this way, so it will go around. And let's go ahead and do the one for this side too. And whoops, let me mark how big of a piece we need. The width of the spine. Oh, that's crooked. That looks better. All right, now we'll glue these two pieces on with some Fabri-Tac. <laughs> My hands are really bad. I literally have been working in here all day painting. Just gonna kind of round this a little bit and hold it down just for a minute. It's a little crooked. It's got to be a little bit of patient. I have a little glue seepage. When that happens, you can take a, a wet, a baby wipe and get the glue up, but for time, 
that's still a little crooked. That's better. So I'll fill this book and it will be part. Uh, I have this and one other thing I think I'm going to give away for the June giveaway. I do one of each month. I'm coming up on 2,500 subscribers, so I might do a special giveaway for that one when I get there. And thank you guys. I really, you know what? I have to tell you guys if you're still watching. Um, the some of you that you you know who you are that always seem to comment. It just really makes me happy because um, even a thumbs up is is incredibly kind and and want, it, it makes me keep going where I feel like am I, you know I feel like sometimes I'm spinning my wheels and nobody really wants to watch this stuff or they already know you know they've seen it all or whatever but I do appreciate the encouragement you know just from just by a little heart or something. Um, I think we all do, those of us that make these videos and that, that we aren't monetized and we're doing it just to, out of the love of our craft and to share our knowledge of, you know, our ideas, you know, it's not, I think it's just because we love what we do, you know, we enjoy it and we just want to share with others uh, what we do. So we've got that piece down. Let me get this piece up and put this at the top. And there again, I'm rounding this a little bit. It's so much glue on my fingers, I gotta try to get it off. Now I'm using, this seemed to work for me pretty good. Uh, it, a, a eraser because I don't want to mess with the gold paint on that okay so we have our part of our spine done now I have this that should be dry it is so now I can go ahead and dry brush this so you can see the image it'll pop right out once I put the gold on it I didn't want it all gold. I did want, you know, it to look a little aged, so that's why I chose to paint it first. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just pretty much fussy cut right around this. So it fits nicely on that spine. And this is, you know, this is nice if you have like wood um, pieces, you know, uh, what do you call those? Little wood, oh, what am I thinking of? Oh, chipboard pieces, little, yeah. <laughs> I think you all know what I mean, because then you don't have to do this. And if you find, you can, you know, do any kind of ornamentation on your spine. See, when I sew my pages in, I'm going to be doing a um, hidden spine so it doesn't, so I don't have to sew through here. Let's see how that looks. Yep, that's that's good size. I think that looks pretty good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little glue. So this pops a little bit more on that spine. Well, a little glue, there's a lot. And I'm 
you can use do a brush or you can do your fingers and I'm just going to come and just go right around the edge of my die cut piece and I think I'm gonna have to let this dry a little bit before I so I have like a it's kind of whoops I got a little bit too much there kind of like if you were going to ink the edges just so it pops a little bit see how that runs the, just a bead of the gold right around the outs you know trying to do this without knocking you know the paint off the other side it's not necessary but i i thought it kind of gave more of a finished look all right so i'm just going to actually put this over here to dry let me get a wet one and see if I can get a little of this glue off. Now we're going to work on the front embellishment. And I have the piece I painted somewhere around here. I set it aside. It's not this one. This one's too small. Here it is. Is it upside down? No. Which, where did, oh. No, this, this is for those, which I cut what did I do with that I have a nice big piece of cardboard oh for Pete's sakes gotta be over here somewhere on my desk I might have to come back and do a part two on this guys after I there it is ta-da jeez all right now we're going to go ahead and dry brush this Now, I'm gonna figure out the size I want. So I'm going to do it uh, right about here. And you can see the new is peeking out the top, but we're gonna cover, we will cover that with a strip of gold. I think this size right here. Okay, now I'm going to see if I can cut this with my cutter, I don't know. I might have to take it through to the other cutter, my big cutter. Oh, Lucy, Lucy, I got it. All right, so that's there, and we're gonna go ahead and glue this right on. Oh, Lucy. Greg finally heard him. That's my husband, Greg. He finally heard her crying. He's out there whispering, Lucy, come on, Lucy, come on. So funny. All right, a good generous amount of glue there. Just trying, trying to center this. I kind of wish I would have made it a little wider. It's not as wide as I wanted it. I might put two pieces of thin Let's see if this is dry yet. Not quite. All right, now I have cut out or die cut out this piece but I think I wanna come in and make it all gold because I was gonna use it on my last uh, piece, my last book, but I decided to do this Paris thing where it says Paris. So let me just see if I can get this the paint off of this. And enough of the black off it to be able to use the gold. So I want this all gold, I think. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this and while it's drying, we'll put the gold strips on. Move this to the side, let it dry. I think I'm pretty much done with my gold. Whoops. A little bit more, okay. Now that will go right in the middle. So let me just wipe up this Okay, now I'm going to use, I think, this size right here. And it covers up the word, the new. And I want it a little shorter. So let me mark it, I think, about this long. You know what, let me go ahead and cut a new piece because I want them the same size and I might not be able to get that the same size. So I'm going to quickly cut. Let me see, that's probably good right there. Yeah. Kind of a little frayed. Not happy with that. I need to change the blade on my paper cutter. Let me cut off this end. All right, now I think we want about that wide. And I'll do two strips, one for the top and one for the bottom. So let me just lay that on the top so we have the same size. Okay, now we can glue these down. up here so I'm simply covering let me move that down a little bit to center it Let's see if I can slide it no nope. it's pretty secure already boy that really glued down fast sometimes you got a little bit of play you know in it but not this time. And then I have a spray that I like to use. You can use any kind of varnish on the top of your books you want. I have a spray that I spray on them. And that secures, the, you know, the paint. It, it protects the paint on the top from wearing. Okay, so then we've got that. I still have a little bit of writing over here that I don't really like, so, and I really don't wanna do this all the way around, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that or if I'm just going to leave it as is and not worry about it. All right, let me pull up my little filigree, and it's. I'm gonna dry it a little bit more. and we will glue this down. Now I have, I think I'll use this because it has that little, it's got the little, um, this little tiny, tiny little thing for the glue to come out so you can get more in the smaller areas. And if you guys have any of those adhesive machines, I have one, but mine's broke. You could always run this through that and then you get adhesive on the back. But I don't know how well that would stick. Now, I do I want, I think I want it this way. Let's put it right in the middle. 
and for any of the glue that seeps out you can just take a wet one just like I'm doing just like that okay so there's that now let me check this this feels pretty dry and we're going to go ahead and glue this down the spine and then we have the beginning of this uh, book and then we're going to come in and I will uh, show you how I put my end papers in um, and also we will go ahead and cover the cover you know the the uh, box for the books together and then um, that'll be it for this series I just really wanted to show you guys how you know how I achieved the look the paint effect I don't know why but I really like using this eraser to push down all these little ends because see this is a little bit of a rounded spine so I just want to make sure this goes right over the you know the corner the edges whoops that's a little long ooh ooh that's not good this has to come up this way a little bit I'm gonna have to snip this edge off I did not want it to come over this. I hope I'm in frame. So I'm just going to snip the edge off like that. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. wanted an old ornate aged book look and I think we achieved that okay so there's the spine and then there's the the front and we've got it reinforced on the inside I'm going to use some marbling marbled papers for the inside of these books this one will not fit inside that so this one I will be giving away when it's finished with some Paris ephemera and Paris themed papers on the inside. And there you go. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this segment. And um, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Maybe may, uh, leave a little comment. I'd appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.